If you have any questions or concerns about this week's episode, please call or text producer Dan at 778-288-9255. Start the party, Dan. It's been nice doing the songs live. Yeah, I'm feeling it. It gets me in the zone. Hello, friends, idiots, and friends who are also idiots. Welcome to your favorite podcast about social media and rejection. It is Block Party. This is episode number 255. I am John. I'm Stefan. And with us is a first-time guest on the program, uh, host of the Black People Love Paramore podcast. Sequoia Holmes is here. Hi, Sequoia. Hi, Sequoia. Hi, John. Hi, Stefan. How are y'all? Oh, good. Yeah, we're yeah. great. I feel like uh, I feel like we don't usually get uh, helloed by name. That was nice. I like it. That. Is nice. Yeah. You said hi, John, and hi, Stefan. It's usually yeah. just sort of like hey, or like <laughs> hi, guys, or they'll say <laughs> Stefan or Steven. Oh, um, that's true. You do get you get Steve. You got Steven a couple episodes ago. I feel like I did. I think yeah. even when people know how to pronounce it, that's yeah. like that's like way down the line. So I I get Stefan a lot, specifically because of Bill Hader's character, mm. even though that's spelled differently. I think isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's O N. Yeah, but mm, yeah, this this looks like Stefan explicitly. Like it feels like you would have to reach for the rest of them. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, I, I can only that. imagine Sequoia just gets absolutely butchered as a name constantly. <laughs> you know what? Kind of, kind of, sort of. Yeah, there's some interesting twists that I've seen on Sequoia. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like it's not. Uh, I mean, I guess it is a pretty prominent tree as well as uh, make of Toyota. You know, like I'm like, it's a very proper noun. Like it's everywhere. <laughs> I, just, I see my name all the time, so I don't understand what's the confusion. But sure. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I mean, it's nice. I mean, the thing that always gets the thing that pisses me off is when people it's not from saying my name. Obviously, everybody knows John, but people will spell my name with no H. Yes. Uh, and everybody knows J.O.N. is a criminal. Yeah. And John <laughs> is, a, is a is a nice and good boy. Yeah. So Absolutely I get pissed fair. when people are like John J.O.N., <laughs> especially if they're like replying to me on Twitter. That happened to me the other day. Someone replied to me on Twitter and said J O N. I'm like, my name is literally uh, the. I will get people <laughs> spelling thing. it with P H on on social media when my, again yeah. my name is right there as well. It's just yeah. very. You have to go like an extra mile to spell it wrong in that situation. P H, right? Yeah. With a P H, so. I could see how they could come to Stephen, but just S T E F A N is, is Stephen. I don't understand. So, yeah. yeah, I guess it's not yeah. the most common pronunciation of that version of the name, but at this point, I don't know. At this point. <laughs> I'm I'm used to it. So yeah. Now yeah. we would be remiss, or at least I would be remiss, not to discuss emo with you right off the top of the show because I am a <laughs> yeah. big uh, emo slash screamo head, uh, mm. and I, you know, when uh, we started talking about having you on this pod, I was checking out uh, your pod, and you recently did get to have the queen herself, Haley Williams, on your pod. I did. Uh, you know, t- tell me about that. That must have been unbelievable. It really was unbelievable. I was so fucking nervous. Uh, my pits were literally dripping, um, but I was trying to keep my composure. I wore a sleeveless shirt for that reason on purpose because I knew, Smart. I knew Smart. my body. Um, but it was it was incredible. She's exactly who she says she is. She's very kind, very sweet. She gave very thoughtful answers to some more difficult questions, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, it was great. Hell yeah. That's awesome. How did it come together? Like, did, were you, were you trying to chase her down for years or like, how did it work? I wasn't actually, um, she was always kind of like a pie in the sky type dream. It's like, yeah, one day I'm sure I'll have Haley Williams on because it'll get big enough and she'll like want to come on. And that is pretty much what happened. Spotify. I was at like a Spotify event and Spotify was like, you've seen Paramore live. Right. And I was like, I haven't. And they were like, oh, LOL, we'll change that. And they reached out to the manager. And the manager was like, not only are we getting you tickets, but Haley wants to come on the show. Is that okay? And I was like, <laughs> is that okay? Is that okay? <laughs> no, it's actually not. It's actually no, a pretty tough month okay. for me right now. So uh, I'm mean? not going to be like, able to make yeah. that work. But Yeah, uh, I don't know. Can't make that work my schedule. I don't know. But maybe next time. But yeah, no. It's like, <laughs> I would love nothing more. So. And how was the show? It was great. It was incredible. Yeah. Haley's vocals beyond hold up. It doesn't even, I don't even know how to put it. It's wild. 
I love that because I I I host a new metal podcast and Ooh. um it's like so adjacent I guess it's right? sort of adjacent <laughs> I guess yeah. it's like it's kind of like uh you know well the we argued cousin, about this on POD cast recently but there is a big like new metal to sort of screamo emo pipeline I sure. would say they Just, kind of like but the two sort of big boom periods were kind of like beside each other. So that kind mm-hmm. of like makes sense. But I just, I was only bringing it up to say that I famously have never seen corn. So like, I feel like I'm kind of in the same boat of like, you know, you were hosting this podcast about loving Paramore. You never saw Paramore. And I was in the same boat. My parents wouldn't let me go to concerts. So yeah. I, so they wouldn't let me go to any see concert corn. or specifically like new metal. Uh, I guess because it was just all, it would have been all new metal for you at the time. So. Yeah. They, they, I can remember, I never really cared about going to concerts. And then Corn was coming to Vancouver on the Issues tour. So it would have been 2000, I guess. Right. Issues came out in 99. So I think it would have been in 2000. I wanted to go. So I was 15. And my parents were like, no, like you're like across the board, like you're not going to concerts. And I had never been to a concert like I never had. I know a lot of people will be like, oh, you know, my parents took me to see Britney Spears when I was eight or like whatever. Mm -hmm. Like I never had that experience. And then, yeah, it was across the board. No concerts um, until I was in grade 12. They let me go to my first concert. I was 17. I saw Incubus uh, with 30 Seconds to Mars, which was pretty sick. That's fine. Uh, it was yeah. good. It was a good first concert. It's not like an embarrassing, like, you know, I saw, yeah, like I saw Backstreet Boys. Well, that's not embarrassing anymore, but like in a, in a, in a certain time period that you if wouldn't you were have been a new able, metal fan, yeah. you wouldn't have been able to tell people that your now, first concert was. So Backstreet is Jonathan Boys. Davis one of your, your dream guests on here? Cause I know he is something of a chat monster. <laughs> Yeah, there's the famous picture of him on the old school computer. Yeah. Bit of a chat monster. I would love to have Jonathan Davis on the POD cast. I know Brian tried to get him on Street Fight and yeah. uh, and his publicists were like, no. Oh, wow. So uh, what about David Draymond? You could probably I would on, right? love to have David Draymond. I would actually that would be the dream guest because yeah. he is David Draymond's the lead singer of Disturbed for people who are listening to this and don't know. And, uh, and he, he is, is crazy. <laughs> he's crazy and he's so self serious. He is like yeah. the most oh. serious person alive. So I would. Which, when love. you have like, he's got like the beard sort of and like the. Does he have the chin piercings as no, well? No, he like took the-, the chin piercings out. He oh. said he was too old for the chin piercings now. Okay. I mean- yeah. <laughs> Respectable. Yeah. Well, the funny thing though is he recently got divorced. Uh so he's had some major like he's my favorite follow on Twitter. Yeah. Um, and he's had some major divorced guy energy over Which is the last crazy cuz how do you, how does he become more of a divorced guy? Like I just kind of assumed he was already <laughs> very divorced. So I don't know how you kind of put a hat on a hat there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah. he takes a lot of selfies. His okay. like big thing is oh. like when they go, when they're away on tour, he likes to like walk around during the day and he takes a lot of selfies with the same facial expression. Sure. Oh. It's like a blank, like, <laughs> like you right. won't smile ever. Okay. It's always this blank facial expression. And then someone did find him, uh, on Tinder. Okay. Uh, and then I think I talked about that tweet on the show. Cause he was talking about how like, tinder sucked and he like couldn't but like he was only because someone was like tagged him and was like are you on tinder is this yeah. you and he was like yeah it's me but it turns out that like i think he said something really like kind of like oh every girl on tinder is like a slaughter like he didn't oh, it God. wasn't exactly that but it was <laughs> yeah. like in that oh, realm no. of like oh it's all trashy yeah it's all trashy women oh. over there whatever and you're like oh boy okay also for uh, him like he was probably married for what like oh like a long time i, would I think imagine. he was married for a long time yeah yeah so to go for yeah I don't now, know. do you really... two want to guess the the name of the disturbed tour that they're on right now that sort of oh. winks at his divorce hmm. oh boy uh, I need this to pay for my child support. <laughs> <laughs> the child support tour. Mm-hmm. Child support tour is a good one. That's it's not that. Actually. It's it's. Not. I would actually argue it's a, like kind of a worse title. So, Corey, oh, you want to okay. take, take, take a swing? Um, a man getting divorced. Is it is it like midlife crisis? Oh, it's oh, that's, that's a close, really good That's guess. closer than Stefan's answer. The tour is called the Take Back Your Life Tour. <laughs> there it is. No. There it is. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh boy <laughs> poor guy poor yeah guy. 
I mean, okay, first of all, how old is too old? How how old is he? Okay. I think he's in his early fifties. Yeah. Okay. I think he's okay. like fifty one, I think. Around. And he's walking around taking selfies with a very stoic face. He takes his yeah. chin piercings out. Yeah. He goes on Tinder. I kind of feel for him. <laughs> it's guy. a lot. I mean, he's definitely and he's a very outspoken guy uh politically you could say uh yes here i'm gonna give you this is his latest selfie this is from three nights ago and the the selfie just says uh good night uh and i'll drop it in the chat here and this is the <laughs> this is the po this is the face he makes in every single selfie I'm that so he ever does see let's see but i i forget that he sort of looks like howie mandel a little bit too <laughs> yeah he does <laughs> My computer's still loading because it loves to do that. <laughs> That's uh, okay. he, he does have the, the dual ear piercings as well. Um, yeah, he's keeping the ear piercings alive. It's just apparently the chin piercings you can't have when you're... Yeah. I got to imagine... Chin piercings are pretty egregious, I have to yeah. say. Oh, yeah. yeah. They always were. The, no one ever saw those and was like, "That's a cool guy." Yeah, they never right. looked good. I I got to imagine by now because like he's very famous for doing the the open like what's the disturbed song? Um, Ooh, wow. Yeah, down with, down with the sickness. Down with the sickness. Oh. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to imagine doing that for like, like tw- going on twenty years at this point, right? Like twenty plus years, yeah. right? Like that's got to do a number on your voice, probably, right? It's at this point, hurt. yeah, it's got to be, yeah, yeah. I mean, I feel like if you see disturbed, it probably doesn't matter. Like you probably don't care that much if his voice is sort of trashed, right? Yeah, and maybe it's just for yeah. that part that maybe maybe he's like saving his voice just because that's like what everyone's there for, right? Oh, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. 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 How yeah, many I times mean, they, do you think they play that on in one concert? Oh, yeah, they do. It's sort of like uh, the Kanye and Jay-Z. They kind of with the uh, N-words in Paris, they go, they do it like 12 times. That's right. Mo- that's just like oh the whole show, God. basically. They're just like, <laughs> we got to run it back. We got to run it. No, I think just once. I think just yeah, one. Yeah. they have some other... Like, I mean, obviously, I assume I know Stefan is not a disturbed fan. Sequoia, yeah. I assume you also are not a disturbed fan, but like they do have other like big singles. Sure, sure. Um, okay. Not. Yeah, you wouldn't know them, but they do right. have them. Yeah. <laughs> Relatively big. Uh-huh. Yeah. Relatively yeah. big. Yeah. <laughs> now, I do know that uh, uh, song. Oh, the, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think we all know. Do you do either of you know another disturbed song? Nope. I feel like if I do. It was probably in like a like a sports video game I was playing. Uh-huh. So it was probably in like an NHL video game I played back in like the mid two thousands on like the soundtrack. Yeah. Um, if I had to guess, but I I couldn't name one. Well, they did a cover of "Sound of Silence" that you that you oh, may have okay. heard. I have heard that, and it's they also did a cover of really "Tears bad. for Fears" shout. Uh, and called it Shout 2000. <laughs> That's what they recorded it in the year 2000, okay. uh, which is pretty okay. good. Um, and then it, I will say, if I could recommend one song for both of you and the listeners to check out sure. after the show, the song is called Stupefy. Uh, okay. And it is literally the entire song is about how he wants to fuck uh, his teenage girlfriend. Like he's a, he's singing from the perspective of when he was a teenager at the time. Right. And uh, the whole, uh, like the whole song, he's just like literally the verse is like, "All I wanted was just one fuck, one tiny little innocent fuck." Jesus Christ, yeah, yeah. it's really funny. Uh, and at, and at one point, apparently, the woman um, uh, was uh, Latinx, and he said, uh, or he says, <laughs> going into oh, one of the choruses, no. like because he's saying like all my people over here rock, and all my you know whatever, sure, and he sure. says, and all me gente in the barrio. Oh, I'm and David sure. Raymond is, is like a <laughs> just like a white guy, right? Like, oh yeah, big time white guy. Yeah. Okay. this was full chin piercing era. This is on oh. their first album. Do you have a picture of him with a chin piercing? I do sort of wanna <laughs> just Google him. Maybe you'll... Dan can bring like it up. I'm actually. gonna look. Yeah. I'm, if you, like I'm gonna be disturbed. If you search yeah, David you Raymond, the first autofill result is David Draymond piercing. <laughs> That'll do it. Was there ever a point in your life, Sequoia, where you would have been into like a wild facial piercing like that? Absolutely not. Never been a wild <laughs> facial piercing girly at all. Nope. Don't even like any facial piercings, really. Okay. No. Nope. Yeah. I feel like I, eyebrow piercings really. We really lost they the had, plot there. They had there. a moment. I they think, had a, yeah. like the moment for eyebrow piercings felt like so short. What the fuck was going on? <laughs> 
Like, was everybody okay? Eyebrow piercings were egregious. Chin piercings, I didn't even know that existed until today. So that's obviously ridiculous. Cheek piercings had a moment. Yeah. Everything was pissing me off. Yeah. I, I, I didn't want any of it. I just, so I looked up his piercing. I, for some reason, I remembered it as just like two little like studs in his chin. No, it's a tusk. They're no. tusks. Oh, yeah, I just saw. God, that's so. Huh. It's like a goatee. But, it is. But of, that's what it is. Yeah. But of yeah. piercings. Yeah. yeah. It's like something you would see on Star Trek to indicate that he's like a, <laughs> he's like a different, he's like an alien species. But he exactly. looks very human, but he's got this the metal thing going on. And 100% like, on the nose. Oh Did my you? God. I had a friend who had uh, like surface piercings too. I feel like those had a moment. Did you guys ever? And what are those? So that's like, ba- it's basically just like when you essentially like squeeze any sort of like fold of skin and pierce it. Yeah. What? So like, like her thing, like their upper back, their lower back. People get their back dimples pierced. Like yes. That type of stuff. Exactly. Yeah. So my friend had her back dimples pierced, and yeah. then. It was in this would have she was a university friend. So this would have been like oh three, oh four, somewhere around there. And uh, you know, belly button piercings were big at the time. Sure. So yeah. she did this sort of like it was kind of, I guess, a sort of statement against belly button piercings. So she had a surface piercing, but it was like below her belly button. So it was like you you like oh. they just put in so, and it was two Sorry. spikes and it was like just below her belly button. Oh my god. So. <laughs> I wish everybody could see the look on Sequoia's face. <laughs> that doesn't sound good at all. To me. Feels what? like it would hurt so bad. Yeah. What about the, this piercing here? I forget what this is called. But... I've seen that. Yeah. I don't that... know. Clavicle. Yeah. yeah that seems piercing. like it would be insanely painful to me. I don't know. There should probably be a Patreon tier, Stefan, where you and I get surface oh, piercings. Don't even. Ooh. <laughs> uh... That's fine. <laughs> It's I'm like be, Indian Try Guys. <laughs> <laughs> we should rebrand to the Canadian Try Guys. Yeah, because that was the wife guy, right? The, the that that was the, the that was the wife guy who who famously like, he was famously a wife guy and then cheated on his, cheated on his wife. wife with the producer or something, right? I think it was something like that. Yeah, it was one of those things where, and this is kind of everything now for me, I guess. Um, but it was one of those things where when everyone was talking about it online and I was just like, I don't, I don't know who this, like, this seems like a huge news story. And I'm just like, I have no idea. I I had like heard of them. I think I just didn't know they were that big of a deal. Like for me, the equivalent of that would be if the guy who crushes things, like the Finnish guy who crushes things with a hydraulic press on YouTube cheated on his wife, (laughs) that would be my equivalent of of that. Um, Right. But I, I just didn't Where realize that would have was... blown you away. But other people would have been like, who the fuck is this guy? Yeah. Great. Channel, <clears throat> All I was trying to say is like, I'm already like the wife guy. Sure. Mm. So, uh, but I wouldn't cheat on my wife, but like, yeah. I well, would be the... bad about yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm just saying I would be the wife guy <laughs> of our Canadian try guys. Canadian try guys. <laughs> yeah. What do we, Actually. what do we call Canadian try guys? Ooh, the tri gourds. The tri gourds. <laughs> the Canadian tri guys. <laughs> I, think, I think it's the tri gourds, right? The tri gourds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so like, uh, we're gonna try out this uh, like uh, snack here. Uh, oh. Yeah, we could definitely, uh, you know, we could make that happen. Where are you from, Sequoia? I'm from Long Beach, California. Okay, so that's basically Canada. <laughs> no, <laughs> but yes. But no. Have you been to Canada? Uh, I've been to Vancouver. Yeah, okay. so that's what you know. We're from there. I mean, I live in mm-hmm. Calgary now, but Stefan and Dan are in Van, and I'm from there. So, like, beach cities, Vancouver yeah. and Long Beach to me, I mean, it's basically the same. <laughs> yeah. I've been to both and uh, I sort of look around and I'm like, well, am I home right now? Oh, well, that's what I said when I was in Long Beach. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to Portland this weekend, which is very, you know, Vancouver coded, I guess. And like, I feel that well, exact same way. Yeah. When I went to Vancouver for the first time, I was like, this is Seattle or Oregon. It's yeah. definitely one all, of the two. All the Pacific Northwest cities are extremely similar um yeah. i would i would say like vancouver is a mix between portland and seattle yeah that's what i always say i always say like portland is like uh portland's like the extreme that's like all you know that's where you see a guy in a darth vader helmet riding around on a unicycle playing yeah. bagpipes yeah darth piper that's a real guy 
Uh, and then Vancouver is kind of like a little bit like that, but also has the sort of yuppie Lululemon kind Seattle. of Seattle yeah. feel to it. And then Seattle's like a mix of those yeah, two yeah. things is what <laughs> I would say. Yeah. I say Seattle's like an, in the Seattle is centrist. Vancouver's right wing and Portland is left wing in this like Cascadia yeah. spectrum. Yeah. I yeah. think that's I think that's right. Yeah, is sense. what I would say. But Portland does also have that sort of dark, like you know, everywhere well, that's not Portland in Oregon is not scarily yeah. Republican. Yeah, <laughs> like, religious. The same way, if you're not in the Bay Area or Los Angeles, you're looking at Republican country. Oh, yeah. really? Okay, I don't yeah. think I knew that about California. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yep. But Long Beach, I assume, is chill. Long Beach is L.A. County, so yeah. So it's chill. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're fine. Yeah. You're cool. You're cool. We yeah. can we can allow you continue to allow you to be on this show. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> We're Please. like you're you're canceled. I wonder right. if we've ever had a Republican on this show. Probably. Uh, I'm trying to think. Like by accident. Well, like Maybe. we had your dad on the show. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. If my if He's, we were American, thing my dad Republican. would be Republican. Yeah. No, yeah. you're right. My dad voted for Stephen Harper every time. Yeah, which yeah. is. Again, the Canadian, like, that's closer to, like, the Democrat. Like, it's very... Yes. Yeah. But... Yeah. I think that's that probably the skewed. closest. It is a little skewed, yeah. Got it. Yeah. So is that is that why you're such a huge emo fan, then? Because you're Long Beach, and that's Long Beach is kind of emo-coded, I feel like. It is. It is kind of emo-coded. Yeah, that makes sense. I never really thought about it, but, yep, that's probably it. Yeah, it's got to be, right? You're on the yeah. beach. You're, you know, mm-hmm. the, the yeah, co- was, uh, every like emo bands from California or Florida, basically. Definitely. Pretty so, much. yeah. I should have worn my Sublime shirt. That's the oh. Long Beach. Yeah. Yeah, the Sublime. I fucking hate Sublime. I'm not a Sublime <laughs> guy. I'm not a Sublime guy at all. Are you a Sub- Do you like Sublime? I like Santeria. Yeah, okay. That's all but, I got for you. I just like, I had a friend growing up who was just, you know, like everybody, I feel like this is a thing that everybody has a sublime friend. Am I right in saying that? I think that's true. I had a friend where it was like, yeah, yeah. like as soon as you got in the sun, I mean, maybe it's different in Long Beach. Maybe everybody is the sublime friend in Long Beach. (laughs) There's a lot more of them. My my sublime friend was also my- All the white boys in Long Beach are just like sublime as fuck. Definitely. My my sublime friend was also my offspring friend. And then eventually- (laughs) Very like I think the last time I saw him. Well, no, I I remember him listening to music in his car, and it was like this was like ten years ago, and I'm pretty sure it was like that Johnny Depp band, the Hollywood Vampires or whatever. (laughs) So it was like, yeah, don't let your friend become a sublime friend because they will (laughs) become a Hollywood Vampires uh, Mm -hmm. friend, which is. Something you really want to? So, I don't know, are, I, you, are you, you familiar put a with the gun Hollywood to my Vampires? head and you said you'd have to name Johnny Depp's band? Uh, I would be dead. It's, Same. <laughs> so no, Stephen, to answer your question. Okay. All right. Well, it's because it's like a super group. It's like uh, Joe Perry, Tommy Hendrickson. I don't know which band he's from, but you got Joe Perry, Alice Cooper, Johnny Depp, and Tommy Hendrickson, and they're. <laughs> I mean, they're really quite bad, as you might imagine. No. Yeah. Oh, come on, Stefan. They're not bad. Well, look. I'm this, joking. I've never heard a single song. I, I, <laughs> they're, re- they're not good at all. But I think what, so it was like, can not we surprising. Listen? Can we hear a little bit? Dan, can you pull up a, yeah, we a probably Hollywood should. Vampire I'm, song? I'm on no, the, I can't hear. do that, actually. I'm sorry. <laughs> Dan, <laughs> I'd love to hear a little bit of it. I'm sure the listeners would I'm love on the, to If you just go to the too. Hollywood Vampire's website, I think they have a bunch of songs on there. But the About page is so funny. So let me read some of the about please, page to you. Please. I'll just read some excerpts. I, and this is, how, this is literally how it starts, and this is completely straight-faced. I think Charles Dickens said it best. <laughs> I'm already in. Okay. I'm already all the way in. Wow. And, well, and well, the evocation of his name makes for a strange bedfellow to a drinking fraternity that caroused well over a century later, it could be said that he had the Hollywood vampires firmly in the crosshairs of his immortal lines. For in an age of overindulgence on every level, it was indeed the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. And then in brackets, well, maybe not that bit. It was the age of foolishness. This is 100% serious. Like th- This is why I'm obsessed with them, because they are so corny. And so, so you have a friend who likes them it. for real. I mean, he did when we were in like college or like Holy moly. right after. Like... It, it, <laughs> It's really, he was also into, um, what was that other super group? Do you guys remember 
um, that came out in like the mid two thousands. Like uh, Velvet, Revolver. Velvet Revolver. Velvet Revolver. Yes. Yeah. But they yeah. didn't have like a Hollywood guy in there. No, it was like no. Slash. It was basically Guns and Roses with Scott Weiland, pretty it, much. Essentially, yeah. But yeah. Uh, so I I can read some more of it. I had the first Velvet so Revolver long, album. I bought it. Did you? Oh yeah. I feel like they had the one hit song. Yeah, um, I like. Sl- I feel was it like Slither. I, was Slither. That? Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. It was. A, I think it was about a, a penis. I think it was. I think you're right. Yeah. It's like about the snake, you know, the snake is slithering, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, I can read some more. Oh, this is so Dan, do we have the music up? Can we play the music? I, I got to get in this. This isn't the POD cast. You can't just Dude, I got the listeners we, to we horrible have to music. Hear yes, yes I can, Dan. Well, here, here's Dan, what I'll we do. have to hear this. It's because Sequoia is here. We have to do it for Sequoia. <laughs> Well, I'm on I'm on the Wikipedia page for their their debut album, which is uh, self titled The Hollywood Vampires. Sure. Um, and it features guest appearances by like Slash, Christopher Lee, Dave Grohl, Paul McCartney, uh, Joe Paul Walsh. Paul McCartney? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure why. Um, so I think they cover a lot of songs. Yeah, they do. So they co- they do like um, whole lot of love, my generation. Break on through by the doors. So it's even worse than we thought. <laughs> it's not. Yeah, I mean, it's not. So the original songs, The Last Vampire, Raise the Dead, um, My Dead Drunk Friends. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, the God. song As, I have here is People Who Died. Do you guys want to hear this song? Yes, oh, please. People who died. Sure. Yeah. yeah, People Who Died. Is it like an in memoriam at the Oscars, but by the Hollywood <laughs> vampires? Because if it is, I'm, I'm way in. Same. Let me know if you can hear this. Yeah, we can hear it. Yeah, unfortunately, we can. Uh-huh. A little sermon from the right reverend Peppy Shalabar. Oh. This is from their second album, Rise, I believe. Oh, this is Johnny Depp singing. Yeah, it is. You can tell. Like it. God, I love when actors have bands. It's like my favorite thing. The Bruce Willis band, the Russell Crowe band. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sounds like a band that would be playing in the background of a house party in a teen sex comedy. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. when they couldn't yes. get the rights to like, a they couldn't good get the rights song. to like some forty one. So but they're it like, sort oh, of we sounds like a bit like Ramones ish kind of, and like, yeah, that's a little thing. insulting to the Ramones. I, I well, that's why I said a little Ramones ish. Oh boy, that wasn't as bad as I was expecting it to be. Honestly, yeah, it was. It, I think it, it could have been much worse, but I mean, it's... Oh. They probably have at least a couple songs, though, that would be really rough to listen to. Like, probably yeah. the lyrical content or something. Oh, would be. I think the lyrics are not going to be good. Uh, I have a couple more original songs here. This one is seven minutes long, and it's called I Want My Now. Um, <laughs> so, minutes, yeah, I yeah I don't know about that. Yeah. I Want My Now. <laughs> Oh boy. I earned it. Along the lines of Johnny Depp making music, his daughter, Lily Rose Depp, hmm. making music on The Idol. Did y'all watch The Idol? I didn't. That, so that was the one where it, I was I was gonna watch it, but I was too afraid of getting so fucking horny. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I was just nervous. I'd be watching it and I'd be like, ah, I gotta go jack off yeah. again. I, <laughs> I've seen like I've seen the clips from it that kind of everyone has seen or talked about and it was just like I, I think this is probably enough but did you watch the whole thing i did watch the whole thing it was as bad as everyone said <laughs> but i will say lily rose depp making music for the idol was kind of good she made a couple good pop songs there okay and okay. so johnny depp's song not being as bad as i anticipated seems along those lines maybe they're music adjacent people you know yeah, music ish right. people yeah i think part yeah. of it is maybe if we have like I feel like the visual of Johnny Depp and all like the scarves and stuff and like looking kind of bloated like he does now and 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 also just like you know he's like such a psycho also like so that sort of but I just I don't know like there's no are there any good are there any actually good bands fronted by like Hollywood like actors 
I'm I'm trying to think. Thirty seconds to Mars, baby. That man's terrifying as well. Yeah, I mean, um, he's, got, he's like a cult well, leader. Yeah, like, and I'm in. I'm drinking the Kool Aid, baby. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Probably not. That's, yeah, Thirty Seconds to Mars is really the only one that I can even think of that has. They got to be the best as one, like right? competent. I think. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. For competent. sure. Yeah. Because yeah. the Russell Crowe one is. Was it, it's such a weird 30 name. Odd 30 foot odd of foot of grunts or something. Yeah, what? something like that. Yeah. Then you got Keanu Reeves, Dog Star. Right. Bruce Willis what? had a band. Yeah. Um, I feel like the, the Russell Crowe one to me feels like just a band you would hear in like a pub or something, right? <laughs> um, but because oh, you Russell know what the Crow, right answer gotten, is. You know what the that? right answer is? Slater Kinney is the right. Slater Kinney is the right answer with Carrie Brownstein in it. I guess that's. But I guess she was an actress after. I yes. Guess. So right. that doesn't I'm thinking like actor count. first, and then and then band. Um, yeah. So it's got to be thirty seconds to Mars. Then I think that's it. I think it probably is it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm gonna Which read. is, I think we can all agree, amazing <laughs> band and not problematic fronted by, at fronted all. by a great guy, like a normal guy. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm not completely sure what constituted oh. bad behavior back then, but in this layer, it existed in a bubble, a hermetically sealed dome of fun. <laughs> It may not have been the round table at the Algonquin, but these were witty, intelligent guys who often got raucous and loud. But rest assured, there were no bystanders or animals hurt in the making of the Hollywood vampires. Um, there's oh, a lot more boy. there. I mean, I... <sighs> Hermetically sealed dome? Does, yeah. Do you, is that the words you said? Yeah. I kind of want to get a... <laughs> I kind of want to get a Hollywood vampire shirt. I, <laughs> you should. I, I might have to I do mean, it. It is a cool shirt to get. I could, I could definitely see that. It is because you can definitely get away with wearing it ironically. You for can sure. absolutely. Um, which is a lot of my clothes. So, <laughs> do they yeah, have I'll, like sick merch? I mean, I'll, I'll link it. Well, I mean, Dan, you, you can bring it up here. I'll, I'll. Some of the shirts here, I would get the shirts. With, I would get one of the shirts with like all four of them on it, right? So you have like the four band members right. standing there. I think I would do that probably. Um, man, they. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's probably the one. Um, God, Johnny Depp is. Let me see. I gotta. gotta Johnny Depp is looking really good in a lot of these pictures. (laughs) Oh man, I feel like yeah, you're right. It's probably the one with all four of them on there. But I do, I do think it would be like very funny for you to wear the one where they're all like skeletons. Yes, I I was thinking of that one as well. That one is that one is quite good. But I was I was hoping this this sort of like. fanged rocky horror picture show send up was not just a lady shirt because then you could have got that yeah i like that that is truly yeah truly insane oh boy god wow this is good stuff actually (laughs) (laughs) oh sequoia they have one with all their pictures on it for women as well just in case Uh, you're interested yeah you just have Uh, to scroll exactly what i was looking for thank you (laughs) you just have to scroll down a little bit more i can't wait the tank top yes the woman's tank top there that's that's precise oh the the logo bling festival tank women Mm -hmm. that's that's really good the one the one there with just the three of them as well is very interesting because johnny depp's hair looks so funny in that picture if you can zoom in on that the one that the raise the dead t-shirt yeah not good eh um (laughs) so he's looking I really Holy like that moly. with like the sideburns going on. Yeah, that's really good stuff. Yeah, yeah. These are, this is all good. I think I might have to get one too. Oh, yeah. okay. Did we get into? I don't know if you scrolled down far enough. Did we get into the official jewelry collection of the Hollywood no, vampires? No, I, I guess that's not surprising that they. Yeah, have if that, you scroll but... all the way to the bottom, uh, Donna De Stefano uh, has provided us with a full uh, Hollywood vampires jewelry collection. Oh man. <laughs> uh, unbelievable. So there's the original Last Vampire Poison oh Ring. Then there's God. one called Alice. One called Pippi Strello. <laughs> oh man, these are some these are some choice pieces yeah, here. This is some this is some Johnny Depp shit right here. It really is. It's yeah. very that. Oh my oh, God. Jo- they've got Joe's bat. On this here, legitimately Joe... feels like Johnny Depp died, and this is his estate sale. It's <laughs> wow. That is exactly what it feels like. Wow. This is uh, the Alice uh, signet ring is only seven hundred and fifty dollars. Okay, so all right, maybe that's another oh, Patreon okay. goal. <laughs> that could yeah. be that's affordable. I'd say. I'll consider that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the charms have got to be a little cheaper. Like, what's Joe's bat? Oh, Joe's bat, seventy five bucks. There okay, there you go. Easy. All right. Oh, you can get extra large. So <laughs> I, oh. I think I would kind of want to see how big. Oh, and then you can also get. The bat having like ruby eyes. So I'm going, I'm going to go 22 karat gold, 
extra large with ruby eyes. Oh, sold out. Damn. Mm. It's unfortunate. That's bullshit, man. Okay, what about yeah. sterling silver? Okay, now we're back in business. Sterling silver. Oh, that's only 11. It's only $1,100. Uh, if I get the sterling silver are. extra large with ruby eyes. That's a that's pretty affordable. Oh, there you go, that. Dan. You're on it. I was literally doing the same Holy thing right shit, here. $1,100. Um, I, just, I just want to say this is this is not my social media update, which we're going to get to shortly. But this is very funny because I had a tweet a couple years ago making fun of the NHL for never making any big trades. Whereas like the NBA, there's always huge trades. And whenever it starts getting retweeted, I know something big has happened either in the NHL or the NBA. And that, it started getting retweeted and quote tweeted a bunch because Damian Lillard just got traded to the Milwaukee Bucks. <laughs> oh, no way. <laughs> yeah. Wow, oh they God. came out of nowhere with that. Yeah. God damn. Um, Miami him and, fans are so pissed right Him now. and Giannis, yeah, because yeah, they thought Miami was going to Yeah, win. it's just, it is very funny when... This I, episode's I, coming out in two and a half I weeks, know, I know, way, I know. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I've dated it already. People are going to love this, but, uh, love this uh, breaking NBA news. It is very funny. <laughs> I don't know if, if any of you have any posts like that where it's an old post, and when it starts like getting reposted you know something related to that post has happened it's always it's always very funny like our friend yeah. jesse farrar he has since deleted the post but he had the famous uh i'd like to see donald trump wriggle his way out of this one post mm. um mm. and you know people got a lot of mileage out of that um That's and good. then he deleted it so it is funny to see your notifications popping off and and sort of like working backwards to figure out what happened mm -hmm. Yeah. The only one I have like that is uh, the Richard Karn one because oh, right. uh, we had like about a year ago, Sequoia, we had a, a sort of back and forth with uh, Richard Karn uh, famously played Al Borland on Home Improvement and he was going to do NFTs. Uh, and then he decided not to do NFTs, but we were joking because the NFT was going to come with like getting to golf with him. Four times the NFT was you got to golf with him four times. So we were like, okay, we could probably pay for this and just golf with Richard Karn four times. Uh, and then he, ended I think up that saying, would have been worth it for like the goodwill we would have lost for doing the NFT stuff. Oh, you know what I mean? 100%. So. And then he was like, I, I've actually decided I'm not going to do NFTs. Uh, and then, and it's a picture of him, like at a bar, like just cheersing. like chilling out, holding up a beer, being like, I've thought about it and I've decided not to do NFTs anymore. It's just such a yeah. pleasant photo to see. But then like <laughs> three days it. after that, his management sent us an email being like, Hey, uh, saw you were uh, talking about NFTs with Richard. He is actually doing the NFTs, <laughs> uh, but it's like a different, it's kind of like a different thing. It's yeah. not, it's going to be based around an experience, blah, blah. They were trying to get us to pay, I think, like $1,000 for him to come on our podcast and talk about NFTs on our show. Whoa. And we were like, uh, yeah, no, I don't think we're going to be paying him $1,000 for no. that privilege. <laughs> Uh, but so, so then I had to be sort of the bearer of bad news because a lot of people were like, Oh, Richard Karn, what a King. He's not doing NFTs, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then I had to be the one, the bearer of bad news to be like, oh, actually he did still do them. And so what, what happens is anytime there's like big NFT news, people will be yeah. like, Hey, remember when Richard Karn was like the only celebrity that was like, I'm not going to do NFTs. Yeah. It's like so every funny. six months, this is like my new burden where I'm like, no, actually uh, he did end up doing them. And really, they got really desperate. Like yeah. the, his management was trying to negotiate the NFT price. Like I was like, Oh, we're not going to do that. And they're like, okay, well, what about $700? and he'll host family feud on your podcast like, what is going on <laughs> and i was like okay we're not this isn't gonna happen anyway speaking yeah. of what's going on let's move on to our social media updates what a fucking good segue what a fucking good segue it it's was a actually Sorry, a this, segue this is a very today. long uh interstitial segue. but it's, it's worth it that's a great one i love it you words and you found the thread from the topic at hand to the next segment it costs us a lot of money to get Hollywood vampires to do this song for us, but it really yeah. paid off. Yeah. Updates. Sequoia, we always like to start with the guest. What's going on on your social media? Okay. There's Tube Girl. Tube is the train in London. Yes. Okay. Yeah. There's okay. this girl who has gone viral on TikTok specifically for 
making TikTok videos in public on YouTube in London, um, but in this very aggressively confident way that people hate, just like vehemently <laughs> hate. <laughs> um, but it is, it is wild how she's doing this in front of people. And it has spawned a lot of other people to do it in New York City. They're on the subway doing the same thing. What has also spawned people to make TikToks of watching strangers do this shit on the subway in New York City, on the tube in London, on Marta in Atlanta, et cetera, et cetera. It's I feel like I've never wild, seen this before. Is, this, is it like a relatively recent I, uh, trend? Yeah, yeah. It's probably within the last week, maybe two weeks. Yeah. Okay. If can we I can, can like, we see it, Dan? Can you pull a can you pull a tube girl for us? I think if you, I, at if first, you search when you said girl, tube girl, I thought you said tub girl, and that is a di- that's a different. <laughs> that's a little vibe different. Off, that's a little bit yeah, of I a got different. Excited. Vibe. Yeah, Dan, calm down. I'd now, be Dan. scared. Of, I, yeah. I'd be nervous. I think if you search tube girl, there's like an article about it, Dan, and there's some some TikTok. Videos is it now on there. Sequoia? Is it the same dance move every time? Like, is it a kind of a routine that's yes, catching on? I'm gonna show y'all. I have okay. it. Here. Okay. Oh, Dan's got it. Okay, here we go. Oh, okay. I see. Okay. Okay, yeah, let's see if we can get it I, on. Because I, I do like the suggestion. Search it. for this instead. Tub Dan, don't girl? click that. Dan, don't click Tub <laughs> do Girl. Do not click that, Dan. Please. Tub Girl's where the girl shits Please in the don't top, click. right? Yeah, it is. Okay, yeah, don't, don't click on that. Yeah. yeah. That's what I thought. Just trying to... Okay. <laughs> Whoa, okay, that angle is. I've seen that angle before, but it's a different okay. thing. Okay, interesting. So, so this is yeah. Okay, I mean, we I could do that here. We have we have the Canada line here, which is our and the yeah. Sky okay. Train, um, okay. which I guess is is our tube. So maybe maybe I'll give this a try. John, there's no. Is there light rail in Calgary or not? Oh, you better believe there's light rail, my man. Okay, so you could do it in Calgary too. Okay. Yeah. Um, I so I think what's interesting to me is is Sequoia. You said there's people who are like filming it like from a distance so you'd get it where there's like none of the backing music or anything presumably and they're just kind of like dancing around and uh-huh. they're literally just like yeah doing different social media okay. angles and people are like look i found one of these deranged people in the wild <laughs> more or less is like the vibe of that I, I like that and that that also does sort of feel like to me like because i'm not necessarily in favor of like filming people in public and being like oh look at this weird person or whatever but when they're filming themselves for a TikTok and there's other people in the background that maybe don't want to be in there. Yeah. I think at that point it's fair game. Right? Yeah. It feels synergistic. Like yeah. you're doing it to potentially go viral on TikTok. And now you might go viral on TikTok in a different way because yeah. someone else is filming you film yourself going, trying to go viral on TikTok. I like so, that. I like that there's the, yeah. the two different angles. That's fun. Yeah. 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 I like the vibe. I, are you, would you do this Sequoia? Would you get on a, a tube and make this happen? I don't, first of all, I live in Los Angeles where we don't, we don't have that. Fair. Yeah. Um, but no, I'm no, I don't have, no, I don't have the personality for it. No, it's not me. I wish I did though. I, it feels so confident. It's egregiously confident, you know? And I'm yeah. like, Ooh. And while I do see myself as a confident person, I can't, I can't. That's another can't. level. Yeah. It's Stefan, different. I feel like you, you're not a good dancer. Oh no, no, not at all. <laughs> absolutely not no <laughs> i just God, remember no. last summer trying to get you to dance at nolan's wedding and you were having none of it yeah and i was like pretty drunk at the wedding too so you'd think maybe it would be but it's just not that's that, how strongly not against it you are even yeah. when you're at your most uninhibited you're like that's right. i can't no. i can't do this I, I know that it's not happening so i, I don't well yeah i mean so I you could, wouldn't do this either so i have to do this i, I, I think you have to do this i could see myself kind of like moving the, the camera around yeah, or whatever and, and then just- Letting the camera do the work, I guess, right? Um, mm-hmm. yeah. And then letting the music do the work as well. But and the fan uh, in your hair, you have to yes, the fan. Yeah, but I am also <laughs> terrified of someone catching me doing that and filming me from a distance because it would just look. It would. You have to release your inhibitions, as Natasha Bedingfield said. One, two. Now this girl is going to Paris Fashion Week because she's so viral and she wow. got invited to like some fashion shows for Paris Fashion Week. If you want to go to Canadian Fashion Week, Stephanie, <laughs> okay, you have. <laughs> to do it on the okay. Canadian sky rail. Yeah. I might we don't have, have, have a the Canadian sky fashion week, unfortunately. We uh, <laughs> we don't do fashion up here, um, but uh, that is nice to think about. I mean, I yeah. guess there is a Toronto fashion week, I feel I'm like. sure. Probably, I'm yeah. certain, yeah. Toronto yeah. fashion week. Has oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It does. Uh, oh, they actually do two of them a year. There you go. It's semi-annual. They do one in February and one in September. 
So there mm-hmm. you go, Stefan. You could get an invite for February. Okay. I'll give it a go. I'll give it a try. I guess I have to make a TikTok account first. Uh, yes. And that would be there, step one so. for sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. I've got my I've got my plans for the next couple of weeks then. That's good. Oh, uh oh. Toronto Fashion Week might be in some trouble. Oh mm. no. Well, this is from 2018 for some okay. reason. The website says fall winter 2018. And then it says Toronto Fashion Week, Canada's leading style event, announced it is reassessing the format of their platform mm. to best support the needs of the fashion community in Canada's unique and diverse market and to ensure the resources required to produce innovative and successful programming are allo- allocated in the most effective way. The organization is pausing production of their biannual event and its offerings. <gasps> wow. And that's so it done. So it's it's it done, might be I done, think. yeah. Wow. So we're, maybe they'll a, bring it back for me though. Yeah, it'd be so good. You release know? your inhibitions, get drunk enough. Exactly. Then they'll bring it back for you. Yeah. Oh, okay. It looks like they have brought it back, sort of, but it, now it's called Fashion Art Toronto. Okay. Oh, so, so Toronto not, Fashion Week. That doesn't sound right. Yeah, it's it does. Not. I don't like that either. It's got to be Fashion Week. Like that's the it thing. Has to. You know? It's Paris Fashion Week, Italian Fashion Week, New York Fashion Week. You know. Yeah, you got to have that. So, yeah, no, it's Fashion Art Toronto. But, Stefan, it does actually have a section right on their website where you can apply to be a model. Oh. Or, like, register. It just says register. Oh, model application. Ah, it expired August 20th, 2023. (sighs) But you you pay $25, uh, and it says, please note, a video of your walk must be submitted. Otherwise, you will not be accepted. I think I I can you put your, your one foot in front of the other you do sort of the the catwalk I think I could do an okay catwalk okay yeah yeah but the problem is I'm I'm too short to be a, a model I think so I think I mean I th- I say we go for it. it says when submitting your runway walk video please make sure the video shows your full body walking for at least thirty seconds towards the camera and then walking away in real time no slow mo. Oh. It is best to submit a video of you walking outside with lots of room so we can full, see the full pace and style of your walk. So they want you to do it outside. So, I mean, that's okay. Well, that's that already for 30 a problem. Seconds, yeah. Work for 30 seconds toward the camera. You have to be starting from so far back yeah. in order to get a full 30 seconds in real time. The camera in yeah. real time. That's, that's like wild. a block. It's like a city block. Like okay. literally, y'all don't want to see me for half of it. It doesn't make sense. I don't understand. <laughs> Uh, it does say that you, you see so Stefan, just to you, you're prepared. You do have to put in your height, your bust. Okay. So I don't know what, I don't know what cup size you are, yeah. but okay. uh, you also got to do waist hips and shoe. Okay. All right. And Oh, it okay. Fuck this. You're paying 25 bucks to apply. And then if you get selected, it is a volunteer position. Oh, wow. Oh, come on. So you're going to fly to Toronto, pay 25 bucks, and then fly to Toronto to walk in Fashion Art Toronto for free? In Fuck Fashion that. Art Toronto. All right. Well, well, we'll look into it, I think. I think we should just look into you being a model in general, definitely. Sure. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> Stefan, what's going on in your social media? Uh, so this is something I've talked about, um, I think, a few times on the show. Um, but there was, a, there was a Blue Sky. So Sequoia, are you on Blue Sky? Nope. Um, so I'm, I've been posting on there a lot more than Twitter because Twitter is not <laughs> great now, yeah. obviously. Sucks, yeah. Um, but there was a, a post going around and it was someone asking um, about worst, the worst interaction, and not worst, but the most kind of awkward interaction you've had with a celebrity. And not necessarily that the celebrity themselves was bad or awkward, but more that you messed up and made it awkward. Okay, um, that's good. Okay. I'm excited about this. And so I, I do have one, and I've talked about it on here before. And this, this is this happened entirely online, but in like 2013, um, Ron Perlman followed me on Twitter, and I was very excited. He's a very cool guy, and I had just seen Pacific Rim, which he was great in. And so I thought to myself, you know, I was, I was like 23, 24 in 2013. I was younger. I was, I was thinking, you know what, I, I'm. He follows me now. I should, I should DM him and let him know that I, I enjoyed Pacific Rim and I thought he was really good in it. I yeah. thought it'd be, you know, I, I made, <laughs> now, nowadays I would not do that for yeah. sure. Yeah. But I, I DM'd him. I, I said, hello. You know, I think I was, I said, hello, Mr. Perlman. <laughs> I think I said, and I, I, I really enjoyed Pacific Rim. You were great in it. I just wanted to let you know that. And I would say within five minutes, of me DMing him, he unfollowed me. Absolutely. I know. I know so, he did. So I, and again, I don't, I don't blame him. 
I don't think any less of him. In fact, I think more of him for doing that. Uh, I think he's, he's a very cool guy. Um, but the interesting thing here is that, so I, I posted that on Blue Sky. People were laughing about it. And then Matt Ufford replied to me and said, wait, he followed me around the same time and I DM'd him to, to say how much I enjoyed him in Sons of Anarchy. And he immediately unfollowed me. <laughs> <laughs> so I was not the only one. This is a known thing with Ron Perlman. If Ron Perlman ever follows you on social media, do not be the first one to reach out. Do not Don't DM him. him. Whatever you do, just him. pretend he's not there. Let let him come to you. All right. Yes. Um, but I'm still like, I'm still upset that he doesn't follow me anymore because he's he's so cool and he had the big, the the video during the um, I think it was at the beginning of the writer's strike where he basically threatened to go to the the studio executive's oh, house yeah. and like burn down their house and kill them in their sleep. And it was like, oh my God, this is like yeah. the coolest guy alive. I, I would not want to piss this guy off. So even just knowing that he saw the DM, probably made a face and then just unfollowed me, I feel so bad about that. But Damn. I feel less bad now that I know it's happened to other people as well. Mm -hmm. um, but Sequoia, yeah, do you have an awkward celeb interaction? Huh. I don't think I do not so like i'm just like cool I have, all the time i'm cool I have every influencer minute. interactions that are like awkward oh please but Tell i don't us think more. i've ever had an awkward celeb i i'm not gonna even say who the influencer is but that's fine i had like a very tangential tie to this one influencer we had been in the same room before i worked for a specific influencer who was friends with this other influencer and so i was kind of aware of her i saw her out when i went to catch la mind you I was, I had been approached to work for her campaign. So I walk up to her and I'm like, hey girl. And she's like, um, and like gives me this look, like get the fuck away from me. And I'm like, oh, I was so embarrassed. Oh, I no. wanted to drop dead. So yeah, <laughs> that was a little awkward. I've only had one awkward interaction with a celebrity um, and it was really, I mean, I guess it kind of wasn't like super awkward. I just, um, I dated Jennifer Lawrence for quite a while. Um, <laughs> okay. and then when we broke up, it, it did get a little bit awkward as, yeah. as breakups kind of do, you mm -hmm. know, it wasn't, no I wouldn't say it was anything though. sort of specific. Mm -hmm. It was just kind of like, you know, that kind of, Oh, do I say hi when I see her out now at parties, right. you know, things like that. So we went, you know, we had a little bit, we're, f I mean, we're friends now. I think, you know, her new husband's kind of cool and like, whatever, he's a good guy. The kid is really cute. Like, yeah. it's, it's all good. You know, no hard feelings, <laughs> no hard <laughs> you know, feelings. Uh, as, as yeah. one might say. So yeah. anyway, yeah. yeah, John, what's going on in your social media? Well, I saw this great post and this is really, this, this got me going for a few reasons. I'm going to drop it in the chat here. This is from, uh, Caitlin. Uh, at hello, Caitlin online, uh, a very good follow. I would say very funny, um, but she was staying at an Airbnb or no, sorry, a hotel rather. But this re very much reminded me of like Airbnb furniture or like wall decorations. Like, you know how every Airbnb for some reason just has like the stupidest decorations you yeah. can find. So this, this clock. So the tweet is just incredibly irritating clock in my hotel room. And I'm going to drop it in the chat here right now. And uh, you can see it is. Uh, Let's see. It is very. Oh, my God. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I, I hate those novelty clocks where, I mean, you can still tell what time it is because of like the position of the hands, I guess. But like, yeah, don't make me do extra work. Oh, that's. Yeah. So there's the there's the clock right there. So it's a math a math based wow. clock. <laughs> I just I, loaded my Twitter just loaded. This is yeah. disgusting. <laughs> I'm taken aback, aghast. I mean, I work, no. working backwards, I I know how it's, you know, it's one, two, three. It is like the numbers on the clock, obviously, but like but come on. I, I uh, so I'll say I'll say right away uh, the one thing I do give them a little bit of credit for is that most of the problems are really not that hard to solve either. Like, you know, square root of nine. I mean, that's like pretty easy, but sure. two of these problems really irritate me. The first one is that for 1 a.m., it's just 102 minus yeah, 101. Yeah, they really ran out of ideas for that <laughs> yeah, one. Yeah, like, fuck <laughs> off. 
Yeah. <laughs> like just the most basic subtraction. And then the other one is this one right here, 55,616 yeah. divided by 6,952, yeah. which I guess equals eight. Yeah. Like get fucked. I, I, that I'm one so pissed upset. me off. I'm so upset. <laughs> as someone who is bordering on Gen Z, a zillennial, if you will, I already can barely tell an analog clock anyway. <laughs> okay. Have a hard time with it anyway. So when you said you're assuming that's eight, I'm like, I hope you're right, because I can't really fucking tell you if it is eight PM. <laughs> um but this 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 makes me livid. Yeah. This makes me absolutely livid. I would have a strong desire to break it. I would have to actively <laughs> ignore my intrusive thoughts to break this clock. Can I yeah. say what else is like an underrated bad part of this is that it's a square clock. <gasps> yes. Also, I don't like I, something that. was really throwing me off about yeah. it. You're so fucking right. Because it's, it's, it's still it's still around, off. right? It's still like the numbers are are arranged in a circle, and then you just have all this blank space in the corners, and it's just. I, I'm having a very unwarranted emotional response to this clock. <laughs> <laughs> this is <laughs> enraging. Please turn it off. Okay, turn it off. Speaking of unwarranted <laughs> responses, let's move on to our block tail. What did you tweet? You brought receipts. Block tail. Woo. No longer can see the post. It's a block tail. Woo. You probably deserved it. It's a block tail. <laughs> no one has ever liked our theme songs more than you, Sequoia. <laughs> I'm having a great time with the theme songs. I'm like, oh my God, I have to introduce this on my podcast. I need interstitials. <laughs> I mean, it's fun. They're fun to have. And I'll say that uh, these are all listener submitted. Yes. So, you know, you I'm sure, you know, you have obviously a, a big audience over at uh, Black People Love Paramore. I, I just go on your show. Just say, just I, I want to I want to add It'll some happen. interstitials. Email them to me if you get them done. And uh, I would say <sighs> you'll, you will definitely get some. Yeah, I can't fucking wait to do that. What a good <laughs> suggestion. Hey, we got you. We got wow. you. Thanks, if guys. nothing else came out of this appearance on this very stupid podcast, that <laughs> you have that to. to I had a great well, I felt time. bad that we pissed you off with the clock, yeah, a, so we a had a wave to, of emotion. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it was a real, a real crest, and then a real <laughs> wave. Um, Sequoia, the floor is yours. Uh, what's your What's your block story? Okay, are you all familiar with a singer from maybe the 2010s named Keisha Cole? Yes. Yes. Okay. Kishko Cole seems like such a nice lady, such a nice lady, and therefore I am <laughs> devastated <laughs> to tell you all my block tail. Uh, it's really not a long story. Yeah, it's that's fine. Yep. I tweeted maybe around 2013 ish, maybe 2014. That's another thing. They shouldn't let fucking children tweet. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Why, why was I tweeting in 2013? Shut the fuck up. I got Twitter in 2011. I was 17 in 2011. Shut up. Anyways, okay. <laughs> so you're I, so you're 19 when you're I'm making like this tweet roughly. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I tweet Keisha Cole can't sing like at all. I don't know why we pretend that she can sing. Well, I don't at her. I simply send this tweet out, okay? <laughs> a few years later, I go to look. A few years later, I'm watching this reality TV show on which Keisha Cole's on. And I'm having a great time. I'm like, oh my gosh, she seems so nice. She's so sensitive. Like, I'm going to go follow her on Twitter. Not even realizing I've tweeted this at all. Fully in the back of my mind. I go <laughs> and look for her Twitter. And I'm like, Keisha Cole doesn't have a Twitter? That's crazy. And so I'm talking to my friend about it. My friend's like, she definitely has a Twitter. I'm like, no, she doesn't. <laughs> like, she literally doesn't have a Twitter. It's like, shows me her Twitter. I'm like, oh, I'm blocked? on Keisha Cole's oh. Twitter because I, and I didn't know why, cause I didn't remember tweeting it. So I go and search my at name and Keisha Cole. And sure enough, here's my dumbass 19 year old self talking about Keisha Cole can't sing. Maybe that was true, but I really liked her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's okay? so brutal. That's such a bad, God. that's such a nasty surprise. Like, especially it just was... assuming she doesn't have the account, which is what you would do. I'm sorry. It Maybe so we bad. can get you unblocked. Cause we we've, we've had this before where guests, like a lot of the time, we'll have guests and, and they, they feel bad about the block. Like they didn't want to get blocked. They didn't think Ooh. this person was going to name search or whatever, or, or they were younger or, or whatever it was. And we've had people 
uh, get unblocked after the fact. Okay. So maybe we can make that happen. Keisha, babe, if you hear this, <laughs> I love you so much. I am so sorry. I never meant to unblock you. Sequoia. It unblock me, and I only thought you couldn't sing at that time. I don't think that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think that anymore. I've grown, and you have to. Your voice has to. And thank you. I will say Keisha Cole has a very good recent tweet uh, <clears throat> where it was a. Uh, I wouldn't know. Uh, Please tell me, John. Yeah. <laughs> one of those, yeah, one of those music compiling Twitter accounts, uh, music data. I uh, just wrote uh, total career album sales worldwide at Keisha Cole, 15 million, 765,000. And then Keisha, Keisha Cole quote tweeted it and wrote, I would have thought it was more. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Meanwhile, I'm surprised at the 15 million. Well, congratulations. Yeah. Keisha. And then she I said, so thankful for what it is though. I really accomplished what I set out to do. Wow. Prayer hands emoji. Uh, w- wounded heart emoji. Yeah. So she got, she was fucking on one. Yeah, she is wounded. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. I learned that about her. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll wow. we'll make it happen. We'll we'll make sure you get unblocked. We're gonna try our best Thanks, here. Guys. Yeah, we're gonna we'll try our best. And uh, yeah, I mean, Keisha Cole is really. Uh, I mean, she's she's actually kind of a, like pretty cool on Twitter. She you know? is. seems like a good poster. Yeah, yeah. 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 Someone she wrote uh, another music data one. She retweeted about how her LP debuted at number two on the Billboard 200. Her LP, just like you, selling over 281,000 copies in its first week. It sold over three million units in the U.S. since its release, and over six million copies worldwide. And someone wrote, "Ma'am, please update your RIAA plaques." And then Keisha Cole just quote tweeted and wrote, "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty good. Yeah. It does seem like she interacts on Twitter a lot. So yeah. I do think, I do think it could happen if we have a campaign where I'm going to follow Keisha Cole. Also, if she name searches, the name of this episode will be Sequoia yeah. versus Great. Keisha Cole. So, and then she might. Yeah. I think she, it does look like she's checking Twitter a lot. So like if you're listening sweet. to this tag Sequoia tag Keisha mm. Cole, mm. Get, let's get, let's get an unblocking happening. Let's yep. get a, that let's get a nice on. moment. I deleted nice it moment. as I did all my tweets because why were children fucking tweeting in 2011? <laughs> Anyways, yeah. I think, you know, and I think honestly, we go the extra mile and we say, Keisha, unblock Sequoia and go on Black People Love Paramore. Yes. I think, I think yeah. we go for, I think we go now, both. Yeah. Keisha, I would love that, please. I think we got to go both. Mm-hmm. I would love that. I would love that as well. Come on so, over, friend. There it is. Uh, Keisha seems like someone who would like fuck with fallout boy a little bit. Maybe, you know, something like that. I could definitely see it. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I could see it for sure. We got a great listener block this week as well. And I, I will say, I think Stefan, you're going to like this one in particular, but this okay. is, this is a really good one in general. So they, they wanted it. They wanted to remain anonymous. Uh, so it just says, hello, I stumbled across your podcast recently and have really enjoyed the episodes I've listened to so far. This listener block is from August, so maybe they've already stopped listening. But uh, some quick background. I work in the agriculture industry, which tends to be very conservative. A bunch of farmers are on Twitter, which makes it useful for me as a listening tool. Many talk about the latest industry trends and what they're doing on their own farms, and that's helpful for my job. Most farmers will talk politics sometimes, which can be annoying, but tends to be a mild inconvenience. I've blocked two people over the years, however, because they ended up only talking about politics and became completely insufferable after COVID and Trump's 2020 election loss. I blocked both of those guys sometime in 2021. In August of 2022, someone tweeted, hey, I never hear from Jack McFarmer anymore. I believe that's a made up name. Okay. Uh, Jack McFarmer anymore. Did something happen? And then someone else tweeted a screenshot of what happened. And this is unbelievable. (gasps) Jack had retweeted a grid of cartoon butts and rated which ones he liked best. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> this upset his wife and a public <gasps> argument on Twitter between the two of them ensued. So a bit later, he tweeted a meme that said stupid is knowing the truth, seeing the truth and still believing the lies. Uh, and he said he, this is probably a, related to election denial BS, but I can't confirm that. His wife responded, stupid is ranking asses on a social media platform that your wife is on. <laughs> Look in a mirror before calling others stupid hot shot. And Whoa. he simply he simply replied, I'm sorry. Soon after that, they both deleted their accounts. 
butts. Oh, oh my wow. god! Cartoon that is really asses. Good. I want to reiterate that. Cartoon butts. Cartoon. So what you have to assume uh, the mom from The Incredibles is number one. No, I mean, so no. it's yeah. it, well, uh, yeah. I mean, she's she's no fucking yeah. dumped up, shot. but. Yeah. No, it so what it is is it's a, a cartoon butts is maybe overstating it a little bit. It's it's a it, it's a like figure drawings of butts. So the sort of the sort of meme is like fellas, which one y'all like? And right. then there's 12 different drawings of okay. butts. So you've okay. got, you know, your sort of your classic peach butt, then you've got your really big butt, then sure. you've got your really skinny butt, whatever. And it looks like he had responded to which butt he liked the best. Uh, also, in the screen caps uh, that this person sent in to us, uh, they also uh, noted that the wife originally rep- replied to him ranking the cartoon butts with the thinky face <laughs> emoji. <laughs> oh. So, oh, that's really good. So pretty good. So yeah. if you're that on Twitter good. and you see a drawing of butts, maybe don't maybe don't rank the butts. If your wife is on there, don't don't do that. Maybe don't rank the butts. Yeah. Uh, if you have a listener suggestion or sorry, a listener block that you want to send in, uh, you can do so at blocked at blockparty.com or you can fill out the form on our website. You can also see this episode on YouTube. Just head on over to youtube.com slash at block party and uh, all of our episodes. And I say that meaning like the last four episodes are available on our YouTube. If you want to see all of this stuff that we're talking about in our stupid reactions. You can also donate to the show at patreon.com slash block party. $5 a month gets you access to three bonus episodes every single month. We also have ad free episodes on our Patreon merch discounts, access to our discord, a bunch of fun stuff. So head on over and check that out. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at block party pod and on blue sky at block party. And if you like the show, tell a friend Sequoia, we are here at the end of the show. That means it's time for the top three, three. Oh yeah. One. Three. Uh. Uno, 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 uno. Mustard. Three. Socks. Two. Girlfriends. Uno, 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 uno. Now, Sequoia, I think d- which of the which of the interstitials did you like the best? Because you you I know like, you you've heard you've all been vibing. I like the one before this. That last one that we just said. What was the one before that? The duck tail, the block yeah. tail one. Yeah, block I like the block tail. Yeah, and you know that makes sense because Ducktales song. I didn't realize that's where it was based, but that totally yeah. makes sense. That tracks. Yes. Yeah, you um, got it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Now you said before the show that you are worried that our top three, uh, like that, Stefan and I won't even know what you're talking about. So I'm excited to hear what this top three is. Can you lay it out for us, please? Absolutely. Top three Olivia Rodrigo songs. Oh, are, are y'all familiar? Uh, okay. John's gonna get this. I'm. I'm Sequoia, not. Yeah. Please. John. But John, uh, John will. I, I John will dominate sh- this. Well, I got to show you. I got to show you a screen cap. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh hell yeah! Oh hell yeah, John! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got tickets to Absolutely. see Olivia Rodrigo next too. summer. Yeah, I got tickets too. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, so um, yeah, I'm not above uh, I'm not above being in a in a room with a bunch of screaming teenagers uh, to see songs. <laughs> well, I like. you're a teacher as well, so I'm a teacher. I'm used to it. Oh. Uh, they're usually screaming at me, so <laughs> it's good they're screaming at someone else. You know. Mm-hmm. What grade um, do you teach? So yeah, one? pardon. What grade do you teach? Just curious. Uh, I teach high school. So in okay. BC, where I used to live, that's 8 to 12, grade 8 to 12. Okay, okay. So cool. it's, you know, they're they're heavy into the Olivia. They're heavy yeah. in the Olivia space. I'll be taking a 7th grader when I go. So I'm very oh, nice. excited. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I feel see, like, me and my wife will go, which is, like, fun. But I feel like it would be more fun to take, like, a 13-year-old who's just, like, losing mm. their mind the whole time. She's going to be fucking losing. I got it for Christmas for her. She doesn't even know yet. I can't wait to present. These oh, shit. Uh, my niece? She's going to have... niece. Okay, I figured it was a niece thing. And that is yeah. honestly, that's a very cool aunt move. I know. Christmas I know. present, Olivia Rodrigo tickets. Really You're high. actually... Really hard for the cool aunt role. I'll Real say... High. Santa's gonna look like a bitch this year. Santa's oh, yeah. gonna not even be close. Oh yeah. yeah. I told their parents, make sure you don't even try because I'm gonna get them. I already yeah. won. Okay. I already won, baby. You can just you can stop while you're ahead. Okay. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> you're gonna Rodrigo. start with your number three. Stefan, do you even know three Olivia Rodrigo songs? Uh you could say I have a list of them in front of me that I Googled. Okay. <laughs> Proud of you, well, what more what more could you want? Mm-hmm. Um okay, so yeah, Sequoia, give us your number three, please. Okay, my number three is Driver's License. Um, I think that was her first single in general. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's my number three. And what what about Driver's License? Did you were you hooked in right away? Were you like, okay, I like I like this. I like where we're okay. going here. 
hooked immediately. I thought it was so cool that she was like telling a love story, but instead of telling it from like a very obvious perspective, like, oh, I'm so heartbroken. I'm so sad. She's like, I'm 16. I was supposed to get my driver's license. You were supposed to be here. We had plans once I did that and you fucking aren't here. I thought that was so good. Such a good device to use for storytelling. I was so impressed by this. I think she was like 17 at the time. So impressed by her. Meanwhile, when I was 17, I was tweeting Keisha Cole, you know? <laughs> so it was just really impressive. Uh, Stefan, your number three, please. I got to go with, uh, let's go with Deja Vu. Okay. From okay. Sour nice. in 2021. That's, and that uh-huh. to me is just a classic. And yeah, I don't think you need to maybe really like go sing, into... a, sing a little bit of it for us or whatever, please, just because I know you love it so I, much. I mean, I, cu- I, I just couldn't do it justice, I don't think. So, huh. um, yeah. But, I mean, obviously I know how it goes. And you kind of yeah. like it because it's sort of like a lot of people know it's like kind of her heaviest song and like a lot mm. of people say like, oh, I love how kind of heavy she gets on this one. Now, I am tr- I think you're trying to trick me. <laughs> <laughs> Good catch. Good catch. And of yeah, course, it's a, it's a, uh, I know it's not her heaviest song, of course. So. Mm-hmm. It's a, yeah, In fact, it's one of her a, lightest. <laughs> just going to all right, with it. Oh, yeah, I it's, yeah, it's not one of her lightest. Fuck, I okay, I, 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 got too, I got too confident. <laughs> God damn it. You were, close, you, were right to, you were right to call me out, but then, yeah, you, you, you should have stopped right there. You okay. had me. I see, yeah. I see you why you made short inhibition at parties. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, so I was going to go driver's license for my number three, but I'll switch it up. Um, I'll switch it up and I'll go good for you. I think that's, uh, you know, okay. you know, great, great tune. Uh, you know, great chorus. Good for yeah. you. You look happy and healthy. Babe. Like it just, I, I just loved that. Cause driver's license came out and it, it was a little different it, as far as like compared to pop, pop music, like the pop mm-hmm. charts, what's going on right now it was a little different, but it was still pretty like, you know, poppy. So then mm-hmm. when her second single, good for you comes out and it's like sort of a like emo y pop punky kind of banger. Yeah. You're like, okay, yeah, I was in. okay, girl, you yep. know? Uh, so I yeah, so I gotta go, I gotta go good for you, uh, for my number three, uh, Sequoia, nice. your number two. Okay. My number two, let me look at my list. It is get him back from her most recent album. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's the one that's got a little bit of rapping in it. She's rapping. I literally said, John, this is so fucking funny. <laughs> funny enough. I went on a podcast called Guilty Pleasures with the Try Guys, and we talked about <laughs> Olivia Rodrigo's album. And I mentioned that she's giving Kesha in 2010 when Kesha was rapping. Kesha, yeah. Fergie, Olivia Rodrigo, three rapstresses. That's what it is. Love a good rapstress. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. No, uh, it was because you also would think, well, whatever, I'll get there. Uh, Stefan, what's your number two? Uh, I got to go with another classic. Um, and I would say definitely one of her sort of in the middle, it's not heavy or light, but it's, um, and I would say that would be jealousy, jealousy. Okay. That That's kind a of really that kind weird of... choice for number two. I feel That's like weird. most Olivia Rodrigo fans would not have that in their top three. Very much agree with you there, John. Yeah. Well, I like to take things. I'm a little, I'm a little different, you know? Okay. So what is it yeah. about sort of jealousy, jealousy? Like if you're so different yeah. from everybody, like what is it about that song that particularly connected with you? Please elaborate. Just, just the vibes of it. Just the okay. vibes. Like in what way? Like what, how would you describe the vibes? Which vibes? Yeah. I mean, just all, most of the, most of the vibes in the song, I'm like, oh, I, I love these vibes. And then some <laughs> of the vibes I'm like, nah, I don't love these vibes, but I like them. But that's mm-hmm. enough to ha- because I love most of the vibes in it. So that is enough to have it in, in uh, as number two. As number two. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Interesting. Because of all the yeah, vibes. I mean, I think, you know, I think Sequoia, you probably agree. Like if you surveyed a hundred people, I'm yeah. almost certain no one would have that in their top No three. one. No. Well, if you Google, so that is if you Google crazy. best song, like it, it's like pretty high up if you Google her best songs on Google, which I didn't do, but I've just, oh. I know oh, that that's, that's, that's interesting. the case. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. Well, Okay, okay, so maybe we're wrong. I mean, yeah. I, I, I kind of think we're not, but we're not, maybe. But that's fine. We're not yeah. wrong. Yeah. Um, so my number two is also Get Him Back, uh, which is why I kind of stopped talking about it in, in your, uh, you know, when you said it, Sequoia, because yes, I, I will say like, if you told me Olivia Rodrigo is going to rap on this track, I would be like, fuck you. I, come on, rap. Olivia, you're losing it. You've, you're losing it already. 
vampire was already sort of like on the edge of like Broadway musical type stuff. And now you're rapping. I'm, I'm you. like, I think she might've lost the plot, but then I heard the song and I was like, okay, no, no, she found the plot and she, she has found some double, the plot. She has some double entendres in there. Oh, double she's, entendre. she loves a double entendre. Listen, eating, killing it. She's Impressed. eating. Wow. She's eating. I love that song. Uh, great. Just a great song. And as far as the vibes go, <laughs> great vibes. <laughs> Immaculate. Chef's kiss. Immaculate vibes. Yes. Uh, John, I'm uh, so happy that you know Olivia. Of I'm course. So I, know and I do too, to be clear. You know? <laughs> yeah. Sure. So. Seven. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sequoia, what's your number one? My number one is Bad Idea, right? Also off of her most recent album. Why can't I think of the name of this damn album right now? What is it? Guts. Guts, yes. Also, yeah. guts. And what? What? Tell us more. Okay, it is angsty. It has that emo mm -hmm. sound to it. I really like it. But it also has like it sounds like it belongs in John Tucker Must Die. It sounds like it belongs yes. in Mean Girls and all the teen movies of the early two thousands. Thoroughly love that. Also, if you've seen the music video, it tells this story that every girl at some point has experienced where you're going to see this guy that you know is a piece of shit that you shouldn't be doing. And you're going through hell and hot water to see this man as well. I would like to point out. So in the music video, she is in the rain at the bus stop, taking the bus. He's moved. So she doesn't know where he lives anymore. She has to find her way up to his apartment because he doesn't come down to fucking get her. Of course, because it's a piece of shit, right? Yeah. It's incredible. It's I art. love it. It is art. It's high art, some might say. High Stefan, uh, speaking of high art, what is yeah. your choice for number one here? Number one, clearly for me, has to be Vampire, which, um, of course, is her song about the Count from Sesame Street. Okay, so Stefan did listen yes. to one. Did yes. listen to one Olivia yes. Rodrigo song. Yes. Okay. Oh my god, I'm, you don't know how fucking relieved I am. Okay. Shit. Yes. Yes. Cool. It is. Uh, it actually has a guest appearance from the Count. Yeah. It does. Uh, in the middle of the song. Yeah. So very good, Stefan. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. That um, is a good one. Actually. It is a good. I do like yeah. Vampire too. That one's hard, Cause, especially because it was like a kind of a risky lead single. You. It also is nothing like the rest of the album. So I'm like, no, it's not. This is when it first came out. I was like, good. is this where we're going? Mm -hmm. But then but no, we weren't going there. It was just like and a one off. She's like, real angsty on that fame fucker. She calls somebody a fame oh. fucker. Fame fucker. Blood like, sucker. Wow. A fame she goes fucker. In. What an insult. A great one. That is a great insult. It's almost better than star fucker. It is. Fame fucker. Yeah. Like you, you just want loser. my. You That's loser. That's what she is saying. You fucking loser. <laughs> um, well, I, normally I do like to deviate from the guest, but my number one is also bad idea. Right. Uh, you know great song. Uh, just really good. And, and I do think, yeah, like I think it is funny. It is funny to me. What is she? 20, 19. I think she's 20. Uh, a 20 year old already kind of writing songs like the dick's good. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? The dick's good. What do you want? Yeah. He's a piece of shit, but the dick is good. Like that's you know basically what? what the song is about. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy that we're giving younger folks the, the space to be actualized in yes. being sexual beings because they are. And I'm tired of pretending I'm tired of them hiding that they are, you know? Exactly. I'm glad that she's not going the Disney route where Jonas Brothers had to wear purity rings for the first, you know, 15 the Jonas years. Jonas Brothers were slamming so. clam left and, they, and right. They say that. Now they're like, yeah, that's <laughs> a fucking lie. And yeah, so I'm happy that. that. <laughs> yeah, my promise ring. Oh, well, yeah, I promised my brothers I would fuck a lot of chicks. <laughs> Very fucking much crazy. So this is the yeah. ideal well, John top three. This is the perfect top three for John. Well, I love it. Bad idea, right? Like it's got this verse, which is great. Yes, I know that he's my ex, but can't two people reconnect? I only see him as a friend. The biggest lie I ever said. Oh, yes, I know that he's my ex, but can't two people reconnect? I only see him as a friend. I just tripped and fell into his bed. There Unbelievable. Go. There you go. I love it. Oh, Get yeah. it, girl. And again, I think maybe this is both of our sort of, uh, you know, past music loves or current music loves Sequoia. But it, again, does have that kind of ruckus pop punk kind of it's got it's it's giving late era Avril Lavigne. Mm -hmm. Uh, Very much. You know. Oh my God. Extremely that. Yes. Yeah. And so, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the first time I heard that song, cause vampire, I, I liked from the start, 
but I was a little nervous that it was, she was going to do a little more of this kind of like flowery show tuny type of album. And then when mm-hmm. that was single number two, I'm like, Oh no, Olivia's still in her bag, baby. We're Let's here. go. We're here. You know what? Oddly, I feel like sour, her first album did go a little bit more in that vampire route than yes. I appreciated as a totality. And I did not like it as much. I, I felt like I was sold teen angst and given teen crooning and that's not what I wanted from her. And then in gut, she's giving me the teen angst that the I teen really, angst is really, back. really want as a 30 year old angsty teen. Uh, I really yes. wanted that. I know? do also want to say, of course, the, the reason I chose vampires because it is sort of a, an indirect shout out to Hollywood vampires, our favorite band. No, there so, we are. Yeah, <laughs> that's you know what, true. There it is. Yes, there it I'll is. Take that. <laughs> yeah, we'll take that. Uh, Sequoia, great top three. So great to have you on the show as well. Uh, before we go, is there anything you'd like to plug? Um, just go listen to my podcast. Black people love Paramore. Yeah, that's that's all I got. And where can people follow you online on, you on Twitter, online, Instagram, across all social media platforms at Sequoia B Holmes, and you can follow my podcast across all the social media platforms at BPLP Pod. There you go. All right, check it out. Black people love Paramore. Give Sequoia a follow. You can give us a follow on Twitter and Instagram at Block Party Pod and on Blue Sky at Block Party and on YouTube at Block Party. And you can also donate to the show at Patreon.com/slash Block Party. And we'll see you back here next week. Goodbye. Goodbye.